I only intended to pull <laughs> three cards, but for some reason I pulled a fourth. So we'll go with it. Four is a lucky number for me. So we have some interesting ones here. We have new vision, schizophrenia, innocence, and control. The numbers that come up are four, because we have four cards. 12, 2, and 19. So let's go to the guidebook and let's read for a new vision. The figure on this card is being born anew, emerging from his earthbound roots and growing wings to fly into the unbounded. The geometric shapes around the body of the figure show the many dimensions of life simultaneously available to him. The square represents the physical, the manifest, the known. The circle represents the unmanifest, the spirit, pure space. And the triangles symbolizes the threefold nature of the universe, manifest, unmanifest, and the human being who contains both. Now you are presented with an opportunity, opportunity to see life in all of its dimensions, dimensions, from the depths to the heights, they exist together. And when we come to know from experience that the dark and the difficult are needed as much as the light and easy, then we begin to have a very different perspective on the world. By allowing all of life's colors to penetrate us, we become more integrated. When you open up to the ultimate, immediately it pours into you. You are no longer an ordinary human being, being you have transcended. Your insight has become the insight of the whole existence. Now you are no longer separate, you have found your roots. Otherwise, ordinarily, everybody is moving without roots, not knowing from where their heart goes on receiving energy, not knowing who goes on breathing in them, not knowing the life juice that is running inside them. It is not the body, it is not the mind. It is something transcendental to all duality. That is called Bhagavad, the Bhagavad in the Ten Directions. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Baby girl. Your inner being, when it opens, first experiences two directions, the height, the depth, and then slowly, slowly, as this becomes your established situation, you start looking around, spreading into all other eight directions. And once you have attained to the point where your height and depth meet, then you can look around to the very circumference of the universe. Then your consciousness starts unfolding in all 10 directions, but the road has been won. Okay, let's go to schizophrenia. That is number two, and I think that's gonna be two of clouds, and I'm corrected as two of clouds. The person on this card brings a new twist to the old idea of getting stuck between a rock and a hard place. But we are in precisely this sort of situation when we get stuck in the indecisive and dualistic aspect of the mind. Should I let my arms go and fall head first or let my legs go and fall feet first? Should I go here or there? Should I say yes or no? And whatever decision we make, we will always wonder if we should have decided the other way. The only way out of this dilemma is unfortunately to let go of both at once. You can't work your way out of this one by solving it, making a list of pros and cons, or in any way working it out with your mind. Better to follow your heart if you can find it. If you can't find it, just jump. Your heart will start beating so fast, there will be no mistake about where it is. Man is split. Schizophrenia is a normal condition of man, at least now. It may not have been so in a primitive world, but centuries of conditioning, civilization, and culture, and religion have made man a crowd. Divided, split, contradictory. But because this split is against his nature, deep down, somewhere hidden, the unity still survives. Because the soul of man is one, all the conditioning at the most destroy the periphery of the man, but the center remains untouched. That is how man continues to live, but his life has become a hell. The whole effort of Zen is how to drop the schizophrenia, how to drop the split personality, how to drop the divided man, how to become undivided, integrated, centered, and crystallized. 
The way you are, you cannot say that you are. You don't have a being. You are a marketplace. Many voices. If you want to say yes, immediately the no is there. You cannot even utter a simple word yes with totality. In this way, happiness is not possible. Unhappiness is a natural consequence of a split personality. We're going to go to innocence next. The old man in this card radiates a childlike delight in the world. There is a sense of grace surrounding him, as if he is at home with himself and with what life has brought. He seems to be having a playful communication with the praying mantis on his finger, as if the two of them are the greatest friends. The pink flowers cascading around him represent a time of letting go, relaxation, and sweetness. They are a response to his presence, a reflection of his own qualities. The innocence that comes from a deep experience of life is childlike, but not childish. The innocence of children is beautiful, but ignorant. It will be replaced by mistrust and doubt as the child grows and learns that the world can be a dangerous and threatening place. But the innocence of a life lived fully has a quality of wisdom and acceptance of the ever-changing wonder of life. Zen says that if you drop knowledge, and within knowledge everything is included, your name, your identity, everything, because this has been given to you by others. If you drop all that has been given by others, you will have a totally different quality to your being, innocence. This would be a crucifixion of the persona, the personality, and it would be a resurrection of your innocence. You will become a child again, reborn. The last card is Control, and it is the King of Clouds. There is a time and a place for control, but if we put it in charge of our lives, we end up totally rigid. The figure is encased in angles of pyramid shapes that surround him. Light glitters and glints off his shiny surfaces, but does not penetrate. It's as if he is almost mummified inside the structure he's built up around himself. His fists are clenched and his stare is blank, almost blind. The lower part of his body beneath the table is a knife point, a cutting edge that divides and separates. His world is ordered and perfect, but it is not alive. He cannot allow any spontaneity or vulnerability to enter it. The image of the King of Clouds reminds us to take a deep breath. Loosen our neckties and take it easy. If mistakes happen, it's okay. If things get a little out of hand, it's probably just what the doctor ordered. There is much, much more to life than being on top of things. Controlled persons are always nervous because deep down turmoil is still hidden. If you're uncontrolled, flowing, alive, then you are not nervous. There is no question of being nervous. Whatsoever happens, happens. You have no expectations for the future. You are not performing. Then why should you be nervous? To control that mind, one has to remain so cold and so frozen that no life energy is allowed to move into your limbs, into your body. If energy is allowed to move, those repressions will surface. That's why people have learned how to be cold, how to touch others and yet not touch them, how to see people and yet not see them. People live with cliches. Hello, how are you? Nobody means anything. These are just to avoid the real encounter of two persons. People don't look into each other's lives. They don't hold hands. They don't try to feel each other's energy. They don't allow each other to pour, very afraid, somehow just managing, cold and dead in a straight jacket. I know that you have new things um, that you are exploring in your life, that you are just blooming, um, that you are, um, that you're excited about, and that is an opportunity for you, not just an opportunity to be of service, but an opportunity to further grow as an individual. The feeling I get is that um, you can't possibly know or possibly see yet. Um, the immense um, transformation that what you're currently doing will take you on. And that will bring more opportunities for growth, more opportunities to increase in spirituality, to increase in the material world, um, and to um, transform into a new person. Um, 
I think what's important is to not get, to not be in too much in our head about it all. Um, to not try to control it or strong arm it or um, plan it down to the bullet point, you know. Um, I, there needs to be room and space and breath for whatever newness, um, whatever new energy that wants to come in to be able to. Um, and I, and approaching that with a sense of innocence, like a child, knowing nothing other than what moves, other than what energy moves through you will allow that new vision to manifest itself. Remember that the mind is simply a tool. The mind doesn't control everything. The mind isn't running things. Don't overthink things. When the mind comes up, just be aware that these are just, those are just thoughts. You don't have to do anything with them. You can just watch them and then wait for them to go away. <laughs> It's an important reminder for all of us that our mind isn't running the show. Our mind is simply a tool that allows us, a, a tool for whatever we wish for it to be. There is appropriate places for the mind, um, but, and the transformation and the um, opportunities that are going to come to you, um, it's going to be crucial that um, you really open up, be vulnerable, and let go um, so that whatever is going to, whatever it wants to come in is able to do that. All right. I hope that helps, Melissa.